8085 Habits of the East. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful evening live here with a full house and I'd like us to take you on this very special interview session. Live in the house I have a fine gentleman, young, um, do I say he's, um, he's good looking, <laughs> he's calculated and I want to Welcome, live in the house of 885. This mm -hmm. handsome, young looking man talking about why call him chief? Why call him honorable? Why call him doctor or engineer? But all the same, I know his name is Omoye Leshowari. I have him live in the house. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much uh, for having me in the house. It's a pleasure. Full house. Nice and this that. this show already I've been hearing, you know, yes. just so, like some years back, I've been, you know, I've, I've, I've heard so much about you, and it's a good thing that you are in the house live yes, on I the station. Awesome. They call us Habits of the East. Fantastic. Yeah. So I need you to tell us why you were here. Yes, um, I'm here in the Okar today because uh, I'm running to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, okay. uh, and leg of uh, our campaign today, I mean, said yesterday in Enugu, and today we are in Oka, and we hope to continue uh, by heading out to Nicha and then subsequently Oweri and Aba, I think Aba and then Oweri. Yeah. So, and after that, uh, we'll go to South South. We've already done the northwestern part of the country. Okay. Yes. So, so, so that's why I'm here. Tonight. So far, so good. How has it been? Very great. Uh, the narrative is changing. It's changing from what we're used to. Uh, a situation where we're always told that we don't have an alternative and that only two political parties are the best at the foreigners. Now, young people are somehow waking up and uh, taking on the system and they are encouraging and supportive of uh, my aspiration to lead this nation into. Uh, prosperity and greatness next year. Okay, all the best to you. Thank you. You know, we have so many people in the race, so what actually distinguishes it from other people? Um, I'm distinguished by experience, I'm distinguished by integrity, credibility, I'm distinguished by ability and capacity, I'm distinguished by education and exposure. Uh, of all the candidates, no one has had over 29 years of political experience, not as a partisan politician, but as a political activist. And I started at the University of Lagos in 1989. And by next year, with 30 years since I started on this journey to be part of some of the people who made Nigeria uh, one of the richest places to live on that. Tried, worked hard, joined groups, led protests, uh, sacrificed a lot. So I'm distinguished as a result of that. You know, like uh, some of our leaders, I have traveled extensively around the world. I have studied at home and abroad. And uh, I have uh, also shown resilience. And, uh, for those who may not know directly, uh, I'm the one who founded Sahara Reporters okay. some 12 years ago and has used the platform to fight power. Uh, as much as uh, possible. So I'm just giving you uh, all of this so that you can understand that I'm just not coming from somewhere. No, no part of the blues. Out of the blues. I didn't fall from the skies. I've been around here for a long time. So, so and uh, I think when you look at uh, the ideas that we have out there, uh, as part of our programs, if you check out some of the uh, things we've been talking about and the way people are engaging and relating with them, uh, you know that uh, this is a different type of uh, campaign. Which started, we started as a political movement, taking yeah. back a uh, movement some eight months ago. And the register as a political party about three months ago. Wow. And I was taking back with it. When I was still an aspirant, I did over 100 events around Nigeria and 
in the diaspora. Town hall meetings, I know what I've done, um, taking questions and talking to people, asking them what's going on in their lives and how they would love to see in Nigeria for uh, the future. And uh, this took me to places as remote as many can be. It took me to Gasoa, uh, Miss Musawa, and Zanfara. It took me to Calabar, it took me to Port Harcourt, it took me to Licha, it took me to Bini City, Akura, it took me to Abel Kudai, Kenna, it took me to uh, uh, Lokoja, it could, could be, it took me to Abuja, Kaduna, it took me everywhere. And now, since uh, the, ban, uh, the ban of campaign has been lifted, I've also done about six, seven cities in five states in the last week alone. Wow. And already, in the last, uh, in the last uh, few hours, we've already done almost four events between Enugu and Oka, um, so it's between Enugu and the United States. All right. Um, judging from your experience yes. in politics, you ha I, I, um, I can see you have the passion. So what actually pushed you into doing all this? So you look at this country for 58 years. Yeah. This country has been around for years and uh, out of that 58 years I've been engaged passionately with the country Nigeria and I look at it and haven't found a leader at the national level who has met the threshold of my expectations for this country and that is the same thing I'm hearing from young people uh, people of my age and generation they felt left out, they felt sold down, whatever they felt to be trade. And uh, I got to a point where I kept asking myself, are we just going to keep complaining instead of getting involved? And no politicians are very smart at making politics dirty so that the same people can come there. Right? Yeah. Except you want to roll in the mud with that. But you have a point to where you say, you know, no matter how dirty it is, if everybody's going to come out of this clean, you got to get in there. I rolled it in one day. And I turned up this place during the swamp. Uh, <laughs> apology to uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> and it's made the country a fantastic country. So that's that that it jammed me. Of course, my experience didn't jam me. Uh, my years of reporting uh, as a citizen reporter, we've done a lot of investigative reporting, which me to understand the country very well and how shallow so many of our leaders are. But, it would be wrong to call some of them leaders, honestly. All right. Um, I really want to, you know, when we when we took off, you made mention of just two major political parties. Yes. Do you see your party coming to form an alliance with these major political parties? No, we're not forming. When, when we talk about major political parties, I'm referring to the. People's Democratic Party and the uh, All Progressive Congress, Congress APC. Uh, with due respect, these two political parties are actually not different. They're just on the outside, they, are, they, they have different logos, but on the inside, they have the same character. Uh, you will know, say they have the same characteristics. So, what difference do you think you can make? Oh, uh, we can make a difference in every you know, face of our life, uh, starting from security, self-sufficiency, and, uh, you know, creating an environment. Because that's my constituency right there. Exactly. So I have a bias for young people. I'm not exactly young, you know, I'm 47 years old. Well, you look 30. Yes, thank you so much. And you, it seems like you've been hanging out with my mom a lot. That's not what I'm looking at. So, uh, but you know, I, I I've been through. What, I know what you, I can relate with you. What young people are going through in Nigeria, uh, having been a student activist, student leader, uh, having been you know a young person who fought several years, and I know what it what it is to be unemployed because. I graduated from university at uh, the University of Lagos in 1995, for the about, and left Nigeria in 1999. I didn't even smell a job before I left. I didn't, and the only thing I could call a job was my National Youth Service Corps, NYSC. 
which they now refer to as now your suffering continues uh, in Nigeria. So this is but a lot of people who graduated about the same time I graduated, but they may have the opportunity to travel out. I still not have still not found a job. Most of them still haven't found a job. So you have layers and layers of people who have never, never had to work. They're just hustling and, and begging for food, sometimes begging for medicine, begging people to send them money, or begging their brothers or God uh, for remittances. That should not be the case. So we have to instantly tackle that uh, job issue, uh, employment for young people. And that is why we looking at providing 7 million jobs within 2 years or at maximum 4 years in Nigeria. That's our first tenure. And the area we want to do so is investment in security, in the power sector, in infrastructure. I say it everywhere and I repeat it here again on ABS that we are going to turn this country into a construction site. Because Nigeria needs to be completely taken apart and reconstructed. And uh, in so doing, people are going to get busy. Uh, we want to hire 200,000 teachers. Mm -hmm. We want to hire 160,000 health workers and unleash them on this, on this, in this country. In, in talking about electricity, we want to bring in uh, renewable energy as one of the sources of electricity, as solar energy in particular. You know, even some of the issues that are bothering us, like the headsman farmer crisis yeah. can be resolved by creative governance you know how would we do you know we want to engage in commercial ranching the commercial ranching is not taking your land mm -hmm. it's ranching that can be done by anybody you know last sunday i was at a religion church i went to visit someone at the religion church camp and they say it's a city right so mm -hmm. and i'm looking at them and said Holy Ghost Congress is coming. We are going to be slaughtering 20,000 cows every day. Why don't you have your own ranch? It's not a crime to have your own ranch. You can go abroad and bring any breed of cow to the place and raise it. You know, churches can do it. Universities can own their own ranch. You know, and there's so many ways. And if you have, we have 20 million cows in Nigeria that are roaming around. Right, if we can put all of them in five five million in different ranches, or let's say we put a million of cows in one ranch, each. that means we have 20 ranches across. We will employ people, we will employ veterinary doctors, we will employ people who want to buy leather, people who want to use any part of animals like cows. They will, they will be doing business with you, it can even be a source of tourism. And beyond that, the droppings, the dung from cow, can be used to generate electricity. Most people don't know. So, this is why mm -hmm. if creative and innovative leadership is necessary for, for the country. It's the reason why we should divorce ourselves completely from people, in my view, who I refer to as people with analog brains. Nigeria should look like this to you. It should be digital. <laughs> digital. Yeah. If this is to our governor, exactly, very possible. your governor, and particularly my friend Michel Wara, yeah. I, I would have skinned him alive if <laughs> I met this place in a, in a horrible condition. He well, no, you know what he can do. Yes. So, but imagine this studio, for example. This is how you run a modern studio. If you are still turning knobs and you know, begging somebody to bring in, you know, the head, you know, the headsets and moving pieces and bits apart. You will not, it will make life easy for you. You, know, you don't even have to press on anything else because exactly. a lot of things are calibrated in front of you and computerized and synthesized. And that's exactly and what that's, you want to model Nigeria. That's how Nigeria should be working. Exactly. You're just sitting there and a lot of things can be happening automatically. You know, you can put Nigeria on autopilot. Right now, Nigeria is on autopilot, but it's like a plane that's about to crash. Well, we pray, we pray, it doesn't crash. Well, that is why we have to make that effort next year because we cannot continue like this unless we like to you. This is not sustainable. All right, um, I think we, we, we can open the phone lines. Let's see, um, let me have the phones. Let's see if we can um, do one or two calls mm -hmm. and let's see what the listener out there has. Mm -hmm. The person they have for you. 
Yes. All right, um, you're still on to 88 of five. And an outlier in the house, the presidential candidate of African Beach um, Action Congress, AAC, in the person of Omoyele Shore. All right. So the numbers to call are 081-1905-5555 and 0808-755-2258. If you have your phones, get your fingers busy. Dial those numbers. We're giving you like five, ten minutes. Okay, there's a call. Hello? Uh, yeah, hello? How are you? Okay, glad to have you. You have any question for our guests? Yeah, um, I know what you say. I have a great position. If only we can get a party structure in Ghana, it's where the youth can develop. We would like to have you know, the, the party structure in AAC. In okay. Um, I would like to know the office. Okay. We will we'll, we'll, we'll talk to you now. Thank you. Yes, uh, we have a party chairman in uh, Anambra State, and uh, we, if uh, we can have a way of reaching you after the show, we'll let you know uh, how to reach him or how they can reach you. We have a structure here. Uh, it's uh, young but vibrant. Another call is on the line. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Hello, you're on. Okay. Let's meet you. Oh, you lost the call. So? So, so yes, we have, uh, we have truck shows everywhere. And uh, we just uh, came from uh, University as well, we have a lot of students who are arts and Passover. Yeah, I, I can see a majority of your team are the youth. Are yes, the we, are, we, are, we are running on the energy of you. Okay, uh, let's get to yes. Hello? Hello, good evening. Good evening, how are you? I'm doing very fine. This book is fine as well. Okay, where are you calling from? From all those. Good oh. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, please, I would love to uh, know the uh, president to be there with his name, please. I want to call it. Oh, okay. My name is Omo Yele Shore, uh, formerly the uh, publisher of Sahara Reporters. Any other person? Thank you so much. Uh, I love your competitive uh, output to what is happening with the world. Thank you. Uh, All right, thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. I will make the slogan is take it back. Take it back. Yes. All right. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Okay, um, we're talking about when the season of campaign. So yeah. what are your strategies? What have you mapped out as in how do you reach you know people I don't okay, let's think. Hello? Hello? Hello, how are you? Your name? Okay, Anthony, glad to have you. Any question for our guest? Okay. What's your team plan against poverty in Nigeria? Okay, talking about youth, youth um, empowerment. Thank you. Yes, uh, so I, I'm not going to speak in a language of the old, and uh, youth empowerment to me sounds like a slogan for politics. Okay. Uh, but I think what young people need uh, is education first, and when they graduate, they need opportunities, and of which 
getting a job is just one of the opportunities that you can make up into. Because sometimes we sound very plastic when we talk about opportunities. You know, we say, okay, you graduate from university, then you get a job. It's not, you know, getting a job is not the only thing everybody who graduated, who graduated from the university wants to do. There are people who want to get into research. There Skills. Are people, you know, yeah. there, are, there are a lot of opportunities out there. And that is why in defining poverty in Nigeria, one of the ways I define poverty is not just poverty of cash, mm -hmm. it's poverty of opportunities. Okay. You know, Let's take this one. Yes. Hello? Yeah, good evening. Your name and location? Oliver. Okay. All right, ask the question. I need to be more audible, Oliver. You're sounding deep. Okay. Yeah, I can. I can give up now and do something and do it. But I just want to have a good day for my patients. Corruption is a very an issue that you don't want to know what you have. You would like to go to Thank you. You got him? Yes, thank you. Corruption is a big problem. I I actually come from a background of uh, a known corruption fighter. I started Sahara Products basically to fight corruption within the Nigerian political and private uh, sector. Mm -hmm. And I've uh, done a lot of uh, corruption stories. But, and I realized that fighting corruption doesn't end with just shaming people, uh, you know, putting them in handcuffs and putting them in jail. Uh, it has to do with also modernizing our existing structures for handling our business and because sometimes it takes a lot more money to recover stolen funds exactly. yeah so what people do around the country is they devise means through which you know they separate as they say nigeria goods from yak mm -hmm. and that's what we need to do in fighting corruption is so from the beginning of how we process our budget to how they are disbursed and how they're spent we make them transparent okay yeah uh there's no reason why you don't know how your local government is receiving money. We are well. talking about transparency. Transparency is one of it. You know, it's the greatest sanitizer against corruption is to be open and transparent about how you are conducting your business. Okay, let's take justice mm -hmm. first. Yes. Hello, good evening. Uh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm good. Your name and location? I'm Julia from the Sula Enterprise. Okay, ask your question. Uh, I can't be done now. That is a bad idea. Probably talking about textiles. Yes, yes, we can revive the textile industry. But how far can it carry us if we don't know how to if we don't know how to get our products to the market, if we don't have roads to take them to the market, if we don't have electricity? A company owned by Proton Gamble that was good for three hundred million dollars I just closed three days ago in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, UBS, the bank had just closed down. You know, HSBC in Nigeria just closed down. Because the the environment is not favorable for business. So you have to create an enabling environment, you have to provide electricity, provide security, provide infrastructure. People should be able, the country should be integrated. We should be able to move goods from one location to the other at the fastest possible time. And the moment you have that in place, industries cannot ail when there's electricity. 
industries cannot deal with the facilities for the owners of industry and that's what goods and services can get in the market. Right, yes. Why do you think we are buying Ankara made in China? Yeah, because it's easier and cheaper to make them in China and ship here. But to produce the same quality of Ankara in Nigeria, you incur more cost of production than they do in China. So you can't compete. All right. Um, I know that if we had allowed you for now, we would have like, spoken from now until God knows when. Because you have so much to dole out. All right, at this juncture, I just want to ask my last person. Mm -hmm. What uh, what what can you tell the youth as in all the packages you have for this campaign and your dream, you know, to govern the country? Just one message, because I, I can see that um, the whole lot of your group here are just young people. Yes. So just one or two words for them. It's to know that uh, this is the moment. This is the moment that every young person has been waiting for. And they should not allow the confusion about the quality of the candidates to uh, blow their vision, to understand that there's a better alternative, mm -hmm. or there are even better alternatives that are not the two antiquated, obsolete you know, ideas that you have out there with the other political parties, and that we are capable, without doubt, of leading this country to onto the path of greatness, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we do because we have the capability to do it, we have the capacity to do it. The brain is here working over time, and I can't wait uh, to become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria so that we can change uh, the trajectory of our country once and for all and for the final time. Thank you so very much, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. We pray God to lead you to your dream and it will make you the best of the best. Thank you. Nigeria, they use computer. The leaders of Nigeria, they use radio where they turn the knob.